Hi guys, welcome to the Don't Be Afraid podcast. I am your host, Jamila Oiza Muhammad Jamu, and I have with me here beautiful faces. I'm I'm in the midst of women, really beautiful, awesome <laughs> women. And by my right is Simbia. And we have Jola, I know. Okay, and we also have we have Yo, Bella. Yo, Bella Rose. <laughs> What's up, in it? Hey. Hi. How are you? It's good to join you guys virtually. Yes, so, so good to see you. After you left us to be chopping cassava gari in Nigeria. But no problem. No vex. So we're not really vex. That's, that's okay. That's all right. How are you? How are you doing today? How's the weather? How's the cold? I'm fantastic, thank you. It's so mm. good to see your faces, and I'm thank excited you. to have the conversation that we are set to have today. Mm, yeah, same here, me too. And how are you guys? How's your how's your journey coming here? Are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the kind of response when you get you, you get when Nigeria me? happens to you. <laughs> that's why her face is like. That's why it's the way it is. How's your how's your journey here? My journey here was actually fine. Mm. I think I'm a bit familiar with with the process the and everything. So, okay. so it's quite fine. And my day is going well so far. So good. All right. Thank God. Bless God. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, today's uh topic, podcast topic, is we're talking about if there should be limits on what can be shared online, or do we need to, you know, to balance freedom and or regulation. Before I actually start, as I was coming to this place this morning, I just said I should open Instagram. And I saw President Tinubu says it is a must exactly. to regulate <laughs> social media. Because why? Social media is a menace. Mm. Like again, it has finally happened. Because, I mean, I'm wondering why should we do that? I don't know we had a conversation like something like last year or so. Do we really need to do this thing? And we know that we just successfully um, um, banned Twitter for like some months. Yeah. But then we came back up. Why Why do we need... Why is it a must that it must be regulated? Is it truly the menace <clears throat> that people say it is? I, like, okay. So I think for my end... Yes, um, because it's media, it's freedom. It should always be freedom of speech. In the case of social media, everybody has um, are mostly content creators now. Bearing in mind that you know, in in primary school, I be mean, is this secondary school, primary school? They thought that we have freedom, freedom of speech, speech yeah, freedom it's, it's of funda- this and that, fundamental human, human rights. Right. So you know, yeah, social media should be balanced because of knowledge and stuff like that, misinformation and disinformation. Mm-hmm. But the question is, government. Mm. regulating them, social media like, you remember that time that the band twitter that you said it's like my friend was my friend was downloading vpn like mm. simply i download vpn i was like it's not possible government ban twitter like like what it's not possible no, i didn't i didn't download that vpn i didn't think it was possible it was. i honestly did <laughs> so what did you do all through i, I didn't months? download the vpn i said it was like, not yeah, possible were you so I, was I was not tweeting okay i now went to sleep i now woke up let me open twitter I did not go for <laughs> it. was I rolling. The truth is about Twitter. It was like, oh, why are you stopping my sleep? Like, this I tell you, they'll I was like, it's not possible. So, yes, there should be some form of regulation, but the government so should sorry. never even think of regulating because then you <laughs> now have the issue of politics. Mm-hmm. You cannot be saying people should not go up and condemn government yeah. activities it's a democratic society yes. people put you in you think power. it's a power control yeah. thing people i think it's people power. important in all those processes so i may disagree slightly actually i may disagree just a bit with that oh, i yeah? understand the, the the mentality behind it being a tool that government can use to its own advantage mm-hmm. okay. but i think that I think, I think sometimes we, we forget how social media has become a part of living. Mm. You know, we did not mm-hmm. always have social media. Mm-hmm. And now that social media has gone from it being, I guess in the case of Facebook, just some random experiment, I think that Mark Zuckerberg and some of his friends were trying to do, mm-hmm. to and being this global connection. brand that everyone is now a part of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Twitter and all of these platforms being places where governments even exist Mm -hmm. and where they share information to nations to their citizens it is now it's not like tv it's not like television stations you know that are doing business and are now sort of a part of how you access information from every level Mm -hmm. now i think that 
when we look at how life is generally, so of course, I, I, I want to believe that at some point, crime was not as commonplace as it is now. But when you see that people are beginning to um, use Engage their personal crimes. greed, people mm -hmm. are beginning to deceive people, defraud people, government has to step up and make sure that these things are criminal, right? You don't you know, get somebody's money under false pretenses. And so in that way, it is, we are going to set up stuff like the EFCC, for instance. We will set up stuff like the police to ensure that people behave rightly. And that, I think, is how social media regulation has now become a thing. Because people are now using social media for very wrong reasons. We are hearing people that are getting killed because they met some guy on Facebook. People are getting defrauded because they wanted to buy something from somebody on Twitter or Instagram. And so it is like, well... We need to make sure that people who are using these platforms are safe, whether that's with regards to information or any other business. And so when, like you mentioned, Symbiad, right, when, when freedom is abused, it's only in that case that government will have to rise to the occasion and say, exactly. we can't just sit idly by and watch I, people. I totally work, agree with know, that. I totally um, agree with that yeah. sentiment. So I do believe that the government has to like regulate or whatever. But I'm so concerned when it comes to Nigerian government. True. If Nigerian Are government they using is it for personal agenda, it's yes, personal yes, agenda. Exactly. exactly. I am oh, like, oh, I am so Thank regulating you very much. social media. In terms of but like in the terms constitution. Of, exactly. Like Twitter constitution is rights, just a good example. No cyber Did crimes you and need stuff. to shut off exactly Twitter for some like it doesn't make any I didn't even sense. believe it. So I don't happen. believe oh if we're in United States, I'm so sorry, I don't know whoever is going to take offense to this, but if we're in the United States, I say, oh, they need to regulate social media. Ah, Jola is like, hands up. But in Nigeria, they they're the saying, A, so I don't it is B. B. So I do not, True. like, if you're saying regulate social media, I'm like, hmm. Saying social media so I think that okay, I think that right you know, one of that. the I guess advantages of being in this part of the world helps you see mm -hmm. things completely differently, and yes. it also helps you demand more from governments, right, yes. and even individuals yeah. who have influence. You know, there yes. are tons of Nigerians who have influence on social media, whom I think people would expect to get into government or even at the lowest level, say local government, for instance, or the Senate. Because the truth of the matter is until the Senate actually looks at some of these bills and debates over it before the, the government, the, the president can now assent, assent to it, right? And so it is your, your confidence in the U.S. system is because you know that there are individuals who don't care about the president. As far as they are concerned, I'm here to represent the interest of my constituents. People. So yes. if my constituent says that no. social media can be regulated, but not to X, Y, or Z point, I am ready to stay. I will die on the line, you know, for what that person has said. But we don't have people like that in government because a lot of people are so partisan. They are so, you, you can some people are even singing. They're not singing national anthem again when some people are walking in. They are singing on your mandate to stand. You know, <laughs> yeah. we have the objective thing. individuals, individuals who are not partisan at all, representing the interests of people, then I think Nigerians are going to be a lot more confident when the government says we want to regulate because they know that the people who are there to have these conversations and represent their interests are not doing so because somebody gives them dollars or any other currency. Exactly. That's my, that's my concern. Yeah. We have mm. lots of these movements now. And while we're getting to the root of everything, we're seeing that, oh, they might come out to say, oh, it's not like that, but we know the like this mm. is there you yeah. are literally doing these things for whatever you want for yourself yeah, so, so are you really for us are we putting you there can we count on you it's like so, you cannot, so you cannot, you cannot on count exactly. on Nigeria government because exactly. let's look like government owned media stations let's look like osbc let's look like nca hmm. when governments are the one controlling and i've worked in government controlled media like osbc when you want to write your story let's say for instance maybe are specialized the you have to write the good word to a regular show is already doing kiddie cock, kiddie cock, kiddie cock, kiddie cock. You have been, they are the one paying your biased. salary. Yes. Yeah. So you have been vetted. There will be yes. some conversations they will tell you can't do on you the can't campus. Say, yeah. So you now imagine Nigerian government now being the one in control of all of us in terms of media. Mm -hmm. We are in trouble. So I want to reiterate something. Do you yeah. remember there was a video of a guy that was... um that was harassed by his lecturer or something. Is it OAU or yeah. something? I don't want to mention the Okay, TV. that they slapped, that lecturer yes, slapped the I don't guy. want to mention. So the, this guy, the video got to Instablog before he could even say his side of his, his story. story. It was one of the students that probably made that video and he went to Instablog. Yes. Instablog took its own caption, put it on the video. Yeah. The guy had not even come out to say, to anything. say anything. There's a particular roundtable discussion that took it to TV and they were already dissecting 
they were already saying stuff that they did, they were not they even there. Know, they yeah. are not even confirmed. And I'm like, what? On Twitter, somebody is coming out to the guy is coming out to say this is so he had to tag them and say this is so 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 so, so, that, so that happened. happened. This is what happened. I was being like so Harassed. when we are saying all these people, are you really for us? Or you're just doing because it for Because it's yourself? always a game of politics. Exactly. So yeah, everybody's I completely doing it for agree with Bella that the laws that we have in our natural setting should apply to social media. So cyber crimes law should definitely apply to social media. We should do misinformation slash disinformation on social media. So if something is incorrect, we should have independent fact checkers, not government fact checkers, because bias we enter. Like, look at how the Nigeria's democracy is. There are, the people, there are some people that the youth want to enter the power. Yes. But there is real politics that no matter what you will do, these Only are the protocol. people that will enter yes. power. True. Yes. So you know when people are playing politics. So one of the challenges about this <laughs> fact checker situation that you have mentioned, and even the independence of the fact checkers. I remember there was an event I went for. It was by Meta, and this was pre-election last year. And we we're talking about how because the election period was close at close, the time, yes. they were going to engage independent fact checkers yeah. to mm -hmm, ensure yes. that information that was going on on Facebook primarily and perhaps Instagram, you know, they would fact check and then they would ma they would um they would um, Rate it. spot some of the things that were not right and make yeah. sure that the other took them down if they were wrong, etc. And somebody asked a very valid question. The person said, how do you, how do you, how do you verify these fact checkers? Some of these independent fact checkers are not, they're not in Nigeria. Mm. But, they're not in Nigeria. So when we talk about independent fact checkers, I also think about, I, I worry like every other person because it's like, there is a, there is more respect for non-African fact checkers because they have a track record, you know, because they have been doing this for a very long time. Of course, they have technologies as well, but context is very important. They may not have the Nigerian context. And that's one thing I, I believe that we also need to build up. But I think, I think that because of that underlying notion that Nigerians have, where it's like, you cannot do anything without being <laughs> partisan. <laughs> it may actually affect, you know, how we deal with this because I think we also, there are a number of Nigerian and African fact checkers, but of course they are not as popular, they are not as, they don't have as much legacy as the non-Nigerian ones. But I think that, you know, just as within the context of this conversation, I think that we need to start working on those things by ourselves in Nigeria and as much as possible start building such institutions so that when issues like this come up and people say, let's get, into, let's get independent fact checkers, we can actually point to Nigerian ones because they are within the country, within the system, and they also understand the nuance and the context. Yeah, so I was going to say that I'm actually a fact checker. I work, uh, uh. yeah. Oh, powerful <laughs> team, yes. so I work with Gibawa. It's a West African fact checking organization. Yes, I'm the copy editor of the team. Okay. And I work in every election fact checking. So the general elections I actually work. So we actually have credible fact checking organizations. Do mm -hmm. have one. Well, we then we have like a coalition as more. well, Nigerian Fact Checkers Coalition. So mm. we have Africa Check, we have um Dubawa, we have other fact checking organization, the cable fact Yeah, checkers. Dubawa. Oh, Meta yeah. mentioned Dubawa. So, yeah. So, I think it's just about more people being aware of these things. And we also have that international fact checking organizations that we are also under that they actually verify each and all of these things that we are doing, where our process also aligns with them. So, mm -hmm. we actually have fact checkers in Nigeria that are familiar with the process, they are familiar with the systems, and they actually look at this data. We are on field, we are doing election monitorization, we are rating them. So I think it's just about having confidence in the system, mm. knowing that organizations like this actually exist in Nigeria. That the confidence goes yeah. small. And so the problem the is if you, if you really don't know. <laughs> so it's a good thing that in fact checker is even in this in uh, this setting. table, yeah. And we, we actually understand. We see the claims. We source the claim. We check it. And the good thing is also that even when we fact check, you can read the fact check. The process is there. It's transparent. If you have any red flags you want to raise, you can red flag it and say, oh, this is not it, or that is not it. And then we look at, we look through at it again and say, okay, this remains so or not. But fact checking is something that is growing in Nigeria now. It's growing in West African organizations. You know, and I just want to use this opportunity to tell you that you can trust Nigerian fact checkers. Mm. <laughs> hey, hey, well I'll done. trust you on that well, one. Trust her on that I'll one. I'll call you on that one. You can trust to, I was actually going to say that. Because you mentioned fact checkers, and this is my, actually my first time hearing of it. How do we spread awareness? 
to of, of this how do we spread awareness to people so that they know that this thing is here and they can bank on it yeah so um so one thing um Duba does is that we try and go to different um stations like RISTV and stuff and mm. talk about the things that we do mm. and currently the organization is actually uh, recruiting people for fellow so mm-hmm. you get to, if you are working in a new gym or you're interested in fact checking, mm-hmm. you can come in, apply, and they will train you on yeah, stuff like this. But at the end of the day, it's just the way information goes. Mm. Gradually and gradually, I'm already on this podcast talking about uh, Dubai and yeah. fact checking. Because you have to happen to invite me, because yeah. you happen to have this kind of conversation, yeah. yes. and it begins to spread. So I think the knowledge is just going to keep spreading, and we hope we get there. The just the thing is that when people are, when people are, <laughs> determined to spread false narratives like yeah, if that's gone viral like influencers have carried false narratives yes, yes. and in fact checking organizations that fact check it you get the problem is it, the truth doesn't go as viral as, as, viral as the, the false lie information especially like, we like, need to like try because we have to exactly yeah, just like you carry is, your business on your head exactly. you have to if, carry carry it on you because you're trying to protect people out yeah. there yeah so, so if something is going viral on social media then you have to also have those you know, channels that you have to make your own fruits go viral. That's like, you have to use social media campaigns. There are all these, even billboards, like, oh, say this, say yes to, say no to yes, um, yes. information. Like, we can have more of those things. If we can spend so much money on trying to get a particular product in the eyes of people, people we can also, we can do, also that do that when it thank comes you. to, like, fact. Thank I you. That's, that's, that's a very I valid point. Agree. So I was, I was going to ask, where do we personally draw the line between freedom of speech and harmful content online personally our own personal stance so sorry before we go on there just permit me to just touch on something that jola mentioned, mentioned yeah. um what was it you just talked about and of course symbia with regards to how the truth yeah. does not go as viral as, as the, the lie the misinformation yes. or the disinformation i honestly think that there is a higher responsibility on news platforms to ensure that when the truth has been discovered, that they also publish it. What I find that some news agencies, or some news, news platforms, do, whether that's websites or TV stations, is because they know that bad news sells, they, they don't share as much updates on the good news as they, de- as they share about the bad updates. You know, so if you go to some websites, for instance, if they have published something Perhaps they said, oh, um, Jamila wore, red, wore a red hijab on, on today's episode of the podcast. And then somebody goes and watches her and says, she's not wearing red, though. It was something like green that she wore. They will go back to that article and not probably change the headline or whatever. It, you will see a footnote. This wow. article has been updated to note that Jamila wore a different color. Yeah. Whereas, People what you probably should that. do is do a full-on story saying, you know, this is, a, this is what happened some of them do it. In some instances, yeah, they some, actually do it. Yeah. They, they, they actually have a full-on publication saying, mm. we, we are going to you know, call back what we published earlier on. This is the fact of the matter. But I think that there's also, we, we need to also make people responsible enough to say, when the fact has been checked, right, report it as much as possible. You know, that will go a long way in helping people understand what it is that has been done. Um, and I also think that while I think, you know, Jola was talking about how people are not, probably not going to do, do it by themselves. Influencers will probably not talk about it. I think that it is important that as much as possible, just share the information anyway. Yeah. Because there is a notion that, well, the lie has already gone far. Mm. There's no need. What am I, what am I going to, to do, do with yes. this? Still share the information. Yes. Let the few Last year before the election, it. there was an information that was going viral about a platform that was sharing the results of the elections. And it was not true. And of course, both parties... Both of the the, the um, most formidable parties, APC and Labour Party, were going head to head against each other, and they were sharing this wrong information. One may be a a very quiet voice, or maybe like a, a, a silent voice in in, in the in, in the group of a lot of people. But I think that as much as possible, where you can make a difference, it's important that you do so, regardless of how you are going to be outnumbered or silenced. Just put that information out there. Much later, which is, of course, how we see some of the th- these things happen, maybe when the issue has passed and people have moved on from it, somebody somewhere can just see that information and it begins to go viral again and it can just change that narrative altogether. I just thought to mention that. 
very important. Thank you. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, then there's also the bit where I asked the question about how do we, where do we draw the line between um, freedom of speech and harmful content online? Personally, for you, for you. Yeah. So for me, I would say um, it's it's a common sense kind of thing. Like <laughs> I like to be very realistic. You know, deep down, you know this thing is not meant to go out, but because oh, which we will still go back to regulating social media because mm. no nobody's going to beat me for it. Nobody's going to. There's no fine for not me. Not my phone. You know me, my is phone. Not my data. I'm, you are under your you're on your bed. You mm-hmm. just feel like causing trouble. One money you are posting <laughs> it. Like it's just be aware and don't just do things for the fun of it. And this is this is like facing the youths. In as much as we are also the people at the forefront trying to say, oh, there needs to be a change. Some of us are not. We are not. We're not yielding to whatever we are trying. We I know many people that will come out on <coughs> social media. They are they are representing some sort of stuff. But when you meet them one on one, it's actually like, I know uh, many people that are handling blogs that I don't want to delve into so many stuff now. But let's just stand for what we're, whatever we are saying. If we're saying this is wrong, let it be wrong. wrong. Check yourself in and out. And word of mouth too. You can actually you, word of mouth. You can actually see somebody that is doing something wrong beside. You don't need to. It's not until you go to social media and say you can tell the person that ah, this thing you are doing is wrong. The person might not listen to you, but trust me, everybody gets into their closets and they are you know whatever. They reflect they, later. Exactly. So let's let's try to check ourselves. That's like the, the check yourself, check your mommy, check your. When my daddy is saying stuff, why are you sending me bits? I tell my daddy, see this thing is not true. Don't help them to broadcast this thing. Mm. Like. That is how we start from your from your, your, your home, closest from community. Your inner circle, then yes. you can spread the word out, out. there. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So for me, I'm going to bring in my experience as a feminist mm. into this. So when I first joined Twitter, I joined Twitter to promote my um small scale business, which is fashion. That's what I joined Twitter for. But I started seeing some narratives mm. like guys at the head and stuff like that. At first I was not talking. But Later, when I went through posts, I saw that there are little or no one challenging these narratives. These you go through the comment section, everybody's just agreeing. Mm. You go through I the quote and nobody's saying anything. So I literally now had to abandon the market I came to sell on Twitter. <laughs> are you first? I that? became full time <laughs> feminist on Twitter. Yeah, Up to the fact that they now um, stopped my account. No, oh, they mm. suspended uh, they, it. Permanent suspension. Oh. That one is even another agenda on its own. Wow. Yeah. Till so now. yeah. So I now created a full sure. blown feminist account. Uh-huh. Now the one is, was my normal account that I just wanted to say market. I'll just use it for feminist narrative mm-hmm. because I saw that it was a problem. But when they now banned up and I said this is even the matter now to die on. And now started all over again, yeah, dedicated describe. to feminism. Now, from time to time, I'll talk to my friend and I'm like, this is exhausting. And my friend will be like, what was the reason you started this mm. feminist page in the first place? Mm-hmm. And the answer is because there are impressionable young people mm. that are reading these narratives. Mm. The people that want to share agenda knows the reason why they are sharing agenda. Mm. If you dissect narratives, either political narratives or social, social cultural narratives, people are sharing for a reason. When someone shares the misinformation about a particular politician, they are sharing so that you may hate this politician and go for their, for their candidates. Own candidates. So it's not as if if there's no checking of themselves, they want to check of themselves because they, ne- they deliberately came up with this tragedy. Mm. Mm. So it now falls on some of us to now say, aside from fact-checking organizations, media organizations, it falls on individuals to now say, we want to counter these what? false yeah. narratives. Yeah. And shout out to a lot of feminists that are doing so. There's mm-hmm. Tira Olua. She started the Tira counter... She started the counter narrative podcast, and you can see from the name that it's just to counter, counter yeah. these false narratives. Mm-hmm. And there, are, there are lots of agenda. There are sometimes there are intentional misinformation. There are sometimes there are intentional disinformation. There are sometimes that by women and men. Men, and there are sometimes that people genuinely don't know. Mm-hmm. So it now comes in that we now have a personal responsibility, just like the way you said that if you see your father sharing something wrong, yeah. you challenge it. You see your mother sharing something wrong, you challenge it. But it also now comes to that even individuals on social media, we now have to start putting effort to challenges. Many of the time, I'm arguing on Twitter, <laughs> and I'm really not arguing because I want to change your mind. I'm, I'm just arguing stating because it. Other people are reading it. Yeah. And you may they just change learn. people's minds yes. without yes. knowing it. Mm. Yes. So when it comes to freedom of speech, where do we draw the line? We need to draw the line in. As long as it's the truth, 
stick to, to it. Out. Yes. As long as it begins to affect people's mindsets, it begins to draw agendas, it begins to make people's life not better. So you may just think, don't fold. That's what they yeah. say on Twitter. <laughs> They say don't fold because they are they are they are quoting you they are roasting you in the code so, doesn't mean you shouldn't fold. In some instances, I agree. If you are, you are sometimes your opinion may not be the most popular yes. one, but it may yes. be valid. Yes. So in that case, don't fold. But if you know that it's misinformation, you should you should totally fold. You should and. change your mind. Mm-hmm. So even in and I like the fact that platforms like Twitter, Facebook are they have Twitter now have community notes just yes. to disregard this thing yes. because. The line is just clear. Once yes. it's a lie, whether it's intentional or not intentional, mm-hmm. every individual who has superior knowledge or who is more advanced in these things have the responsibility yeah. of, you know, saying the truth. And this also brings me back to also fact checking. Mm-hmm. If you are not sure about what a narrative is, mm-hmm. send it to fact checking organizations That's like Dubawa. Let true. them fact check it for you before you put it out. Yeah, before you put it out. And also always be in doubt of this. There are things that may have unconsciously believed. Is when they have to check it and I say that. Yes, hey. especially about feminism. There are so many stuff I, I but I learned a lot from Twitter. So that's like social media. Yeah. It's still part of it. It's part of the info. So we can't take it out. Like Mr. Tinubu, President Tinubu, sorry, please. Social media is not. Bella, what do you, Bella, what do you think? You guys know. She's, she's, she's she's funny, so Could you ask the question again? I just want to be sure that I understand the question. Okay. Where do we draw the line? Where do we draw the line between um, uh, freedom of speech and harmful content online? Mm. Um, so I think that what, one, one reality that I have come to accept is that everybody has an agenda. You know, mm. everyone has an agenda yeah. that they're trying to push. Mm. No matter how saintly they may appear, everyone has an agenda. And if there's one thing that I have tried to practice in seeing certain agenda on social media that I don't particularly uh, subscribe to, it is to respectfully engage. And I think that that's one thing that everyone should try to do. You may not agree with every other person's agenda. You may not subscribe to it, but you can engage respectfully with them. You can understand where they are coming from. You don't have to accept it. You can understand it and you can, you can have a constructive dialogue with people, you know, without, I guess, folding (laughs) and without also um, making them feel worse off for meeting you on social media or, you know, on, 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 on that space. But one thing that people love to do a lot of times is they want to be the ones that are throwing banter. They say, yeah, this one is cooking. Just, you yes. know, banger yeah. boys, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> and that makes people very, is hot. you know, it makes them very keen on being <laughs> the one with memes. the most jabs, being the one with yes. the most emotive comebacks and all of those things. And I get it. It's fun, etc. But you see, knowing when to stop is very important. Knowing when things are beginning to go below the belt is very important because that's when it, it, it gets harmful. That's where people start to uh, get, I guess, depressed. That's where people sometimes get to start feeling less of themselves. That's where things like social media, in fact, can start giving people trauma. Yeah. That's where people sorry, sometimes get sorry, violent. So, sorry, 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 sorry to quote you. Stalked, cyberbullied, etc. I think that the watchword for drawing the line between freedom of expression on social media yeah. and it being something that can be very harmful is just basic human respect. respect. Yeah. You know, and that, that sorry I caught you short earlier, but that, that now brings me back to, I don't know if you guys remember or you saw, there was this babe on TikTok that was, you know, sharing her pregnancy journey mm. and from each stage to each stage. And someone commented on her TikTok page that she's not going to, um, she's not, I think he said she's not going to give birth or she's not going to, she's going to die at the hospital. So and right. I kid you not, that baby's dead. Oh, I did not see it. Though. She actually died. I thought and I was like, no, this can't be real. Did the baby actually, die or not, the baby? The, the that's, babe died. That's, that's the lady actually died and it's just really scary because i wonder why anyone a funny at thing all. is the funny thing is that you, you people nigerians will come and say oh it's evil it's witch exactly people funny say thing, it's so might be not kind, be that be nice, be it the, might not I'm, be I'm that not it might that. just be like a mental state a pregnant woman is already subdued to some so, kind of depression but then yeah. there's things exactly. that you so, should not say and that's yeah, where the so harmful that kind content of online could comes like in guys. could trigger you know things. when she was talking I, I was thinking of something some people can be so hateful they can be so misogynistic that the only response you have for them is to fire you <laughs> <laughs> So it's as much as you want to engage in respectful conversations. Yeah. Look at where we may come to talk about rape. Look at the victim blaming the face. 
a woman can be murdered. And then you see men's comments, kill or kill or smash. And then they will say, no, they will say okay, smash or go, and they will say kill. Yeah. Smash or pass. Yeah, uh -huh. smash or pass or, or uh -huh. kiss, kill, um, smash or pass. smash or like that? After you, how many people want? Sometimes I will, I will <laughs> really try to just say, turn that fire in. <laughs> so, so I'll be like a hypocrite if I did not put it out there that. Sometimes you just put it in perspective. So if you're having civil conversations, of course, keep it civil. But when we are having all this, and you see, you you wake up in the morning, you go to Twitter like this, you just just close it and go back to sleep first. Yeah, sometimes I want to type and I just have to calm myself down. Like, no, sometimes I try really to say, need it. Yes. It's like, do I need to, like, <laughs> let me just take my eyes off. Because, there, there, see, there are some people, hey. as long as we are talking about, we're trying to change narrative, there are some people that, no, of course. they have, They've sworn to themselves that I would never write something good in my entire I life. I swear. I don't know if it's that's their, their personality they're trying to sell on social media or whatever they're making. Of course, this influencer. Mm, yeah. So I cannot, just Someone... I cannot waste energy. All I will just do is go to my own page or quote it and say blah, 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 blah. But to start fighting back and forth. I, like, nah. I think that also we need to know that sometimes when we engage with some people, we actually make their voices louder. Exactly. So we should try as much as Word. that's one thing I try not to do. Like, I'm not going to give this person like, the time of this? day. I won't give you that extra exactly. view. Exactly. You're not like, going to make true. one more <laughs> pound or dollar from my engagement. Yeah, like, 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 I'm not giving you <laughs> yeah, mm. that's one thing I try. And I think that that, that can help. Um, you know, when, when Simia was speaking, I'm not a feminist. I've had, I've had conversations with feminists and we have debated, we have, we have spoken and I still respect these women. We are still friends. In fact, you know, I still follow some of them on social media, but I know that some aspect of their agenda, I guess, is not something that I subscribe to, but I admire them in some way. I can, I can, I can engage in a conversation with them. I like them. They inspire me in some way. I don't always have to agree with them. When they say things I don't believe in, again, it's like, you know what? I don't believe this. I'm not going to give you the engagement either. Yeah. But I'm being respectful with my with my interactions with them. And it helps me to be to live better. So on, on comment sections as well. Sometimes when I see some people who have written certain things, I take the I go the extra mile. I will go and block them because I don't want to Honestly, see you on my timeline. Yes. So I will just let me go. Let me be able to be in my approach. <laughs> I'm seeing a popular tweet and they are saying you have blocked this person. And by the time I check, I said, this is the reason why. Like, why I should block you? Why, why? <laughs> so there, 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 are two, there are two perspectives. From perspective of a content creator, what limitations on sharing online, what limitations of, of um, sharing online would you feel most concerning and why? And from the point of a user, what type of content online do you find most harmful or upsetting and how could it be addressed? So see, people don't know that people don't know that they are doing themselves so much um i get it we are in the content era, era. Mm -hmm. you want people to engage but come on like i don't need to know what you're doing in your house i don't need to know where your child schools i don't know to know the address of your office mm. like you're literally taking a video at the banner of something that people can search mm -hmm. and on google maps is there when i was coming yeah. here today i just put so so, so and address. so studio yeah. on the and it brought me i didn't need to see 17 whatever whatever you mm -hmm. get so you are doing yourself so much harm we're still kidnapping this this that we're not hey. tracing where it's coming from how did the person know that you were a social place? Actually, mm. no, we, we, we wouldn't really fault that to people in the in the sense that the kids that were kidnapped in Abuja. No, I'm not talking they about kids. They kidnapped them though. in their house. No, I'm not talking or, about kids. I'm talking about adults. High road, okay. I'm talking about adults. I know there are some cases of I, somebody entered my office, this. somebody this, somebody picked me up. I trust you, if you start doing, because so many people, police are not even doing their job. They are not doing the right investigation to all of these things. Do. When you get it, you see that you can trace it to social media. Mm -hmm. On TikTok, a day like, the reason why you are posting in real time. You are posting, exactly, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I no, subscribe like, I cannot tell us what to and I don't, I, If I post in my life, that's the criminal content. Uh, 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 no, uh, you are posting in real time. In real yeah, time. I you are posting in real time. not to do that. Hey, people will still do what they want to do because I have coconut head. I will still do what I want to do. I think we can advise people not to do that, but not we, we can't control them. You can advise, but you but cannot, cannot control. control. Yeah. You exactly. cannot say, yeah. If you advise, what do I say? Mm -mm. 
Hey, there's going in my head. I will post and I want to teacher. post. Sometimes experience is the best teacher. No, 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 no that's the thing. But that's why Bella post, said we still have. have to I think post. that government major. I think when it comes to again, like you have, like we have, we can all agree. You can't control people and what they share. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that the responsibility. I believe that platforms can platforms can now take it take it up and as much as possible ensure that people are not vulnerable because they are using their because they are using social media. Right? Governments have to be more security conscious, ensuring that their cities are safe, such that people don't feel unsafe just because they are living somewhere and they are streaming something. Um, you can't control people. But I think that when, you know, just sort of taking it back to Jamila's question, when it talks about, you know, things that can be very limiting. Um, as, as someone who is both a content creator, someone who is a Christian, someone who is a media person, I think that one of the things I believe that regulation or stiff regulation can limit um, would be perhaps um, freedom of expression. Maybe stifling the voices of okay. a content creator who wants to share the gospel. Yes. Mm. You know, I think that that can affect what we share because you know mm. they can say, "Oh well, no, you're not allowed to do X, Y, or Z." Or, yes. I mean, Nigeria is a secular state, as a lot of other countries across the world, but. Sometimes when you see certain events and how they happen, people are feeling very unsafe to share what their experiences are as Christians and, you know, being able to reach as many people because that's what our faith, you know, asks us to do. So that's one, one thing I believe may be limiting if there is a lot of, if there is very stiff regulation. Um, I think also that um, because platforms now thrive on rewards mm. you know people are going the extra mile to, to put themselves in harm's way because exactly. of views like you yeah. know so in a, in a sense i feel Until like force platforms need to be held to account they are doing nothing just because that. people are um creating content and they are racking up a lot of views and you are paying them a lot of money that needs to be checked because people are doing things that are just unsafe the kinds of content that I think need to be discouraged, I think that's sort of the other side of your question, is pranks. People are doing pranks that are very harmful, and I don't know that platforms are doing anything to change it. Some years ago, there was this um, this pl- uh, this TikTok trend of people jumping from stacks of stacks crits? of um, beer. Oh, crits, yeah. crits, crits, yeah, 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 crits yeah, challenge. I don't even remember that one. Yeah, that was it was so year, dangerous. Yeah. And, you know, it took a lot of time before TikTok actually started taking down videos Those of videos. that. Um, you know, so I think that platforms just need to be held to account a bit more. Um, they need to also be more democratic about how they reward content creators because content creators are helping them rack up their user numbers and they should be, I guess, earning a lot more money because of the money they are making in advertising spend. Reward more creators. It doesn't have to be on somebody has millions of subscribers and thousands and millions of views before they start making money, you know. Um, so yeah, I think that's just my response to that. Okay. So I'll just get into what you said the first time we started this conversation. You before said we, before we wrap it up. Yeah. Everybody has agenda. Oh. The thing is that Twitter we are in is gone go. Elon Musk has agenda. Exactly. <laughs> that Facebook that does. Guy is gone go. does. <laughs> Facebook self gets agenda. Mm. And when you're talking about regulations, you will realize that you may necessarily be saying the truth, but Twitter can flag it because it's because, against their sponsors. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You can go on Google and Google a story now. And the first stories you'll be seeing are stories about trans, 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 transphobia, transphobia, <laughs> trans, transphobia, transphobia, transphobia. The first pages, the second page, before you now see stories that are addressing it and not talking about transphobia. Mm. Why is it transphobia, transphobia? Because the people sponsoring the articles, they get agenda. So whatever story you want to write, they'll be inserting transphobia, transphobia, transphobia. A guy will say, I'm a guy, and then you say, no, you're a woman. They'll just say, eight. Yes, they will just speech. <laughs> That's why they pass on my comment account. Yes, they will just speech. They will just eight speech for this guy to call a guy a guy that he says he's a woman. And I say, no, yeah, man. I swear, they reported me <laughs> to, 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 to that counselor. So this conversation is like very nuanced. I think yeah. that was when I just bet my life that if you are so serious about what you are doing there, all of us will too. that. Maybe we have to start creating our own social media giant. Mm. Like, yeah. whatever yeah. change you want to, <laughs> just make sure that you focus your life to create that change on a big scale because there is no much we can, at the Actually, end of the day, really do. If Twitter has an agenda on Twitter platform, even though not job, they move on for Twitter for one, one time now. And true. the president of the whole country. Yes, so you can't be true. bigger than the owner of the like. platforms. Yeah. If they want to create their agenda, 
can you you see that since days agenda we agent rewarding of creators like you said mm-hmm. there's been more content and there's been more misogynistic content yeah on x because it, it yeah sells. because that's what sales that's what go for us i even wanted to mention before you guys mentioned there was this story that they said the alimi guy that he told his he, he willed his property to his mother and not his wife that he trained all over the countries that story is false and mm. people have checked it now that story did not go as viral as it went viral in on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, can you, can you, and they would have paid all those creators. So the story was just a rumor that started from a parody account. Yeah. And see how viral it went. It went. I see how they saw the hell out of women. Me, me, me. On a conjured story. Mm. So Anyways, thank you. Thank you guys so much for your inputs. As much as I would love for this conversation to keep on going so that we can, you know, dissect (laughs) all areas and everything. I think we have to come to the end today. It's been so lovely having you beautiful ladies on this table and having you virtually. You look so fresh. Belarus, <laughs> I could eat you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I miss the sun though. It's so cold. Mm, it I know, right? Cold. I never the thought. Sun. Do you want to the cold? Do you want to come, come back? Do you want to come back? I know so much. Maybe I'd enjoy your life. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So, uh, you guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to follow us on our social media pages on on um, Instagram, t- uh, t- TikTok, and Twitter, DBA underscore podcast. Thank you so much for coming. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>